Why are you like this? Recently I made a video about me 100%ing all of the mainline Sonic games. Naturally, since a brand new one came out less than a week ago, it kind of feels like an obligation to 100% it as well. By the way, don't worry, I'm still working on the spin-off video, there's just a couple of, uh, roadblocks. Anyway, I'm going to be talking about my experience 100%ing Sonic Superstars in this video. This video is going to have major spoilers, just a fair warning. Also, this is kind of going to be a review as well, seeing how the game is brand new. Alright, with all of that out of the way, let's get them. Sonic Superstars at first glance seems to be relatively easy to 100% even though it has almost double the amount of achievements found in Mania. You get a third of the achievements by beating the axe in the game and I'd say overall it was a pretty fun and moderately challenging experience. I actually really like the level design in this game and I can see that there was a lot of thought put into these levels. They also mix it up this time around by implementing the Chaos Emeralds into regular gameplay other than super forms. This can range from another means of reaching a higher area, a straight up screen nuke, or slowing down time. Since Chaos Emeralds are the main focus mechanic wise in this game, they're made pretty easy to collect this time around. You'll get 7 achievements just for using an emerald power in its respective tutorial. Then of course you get an achievement for going super. Now you would think that you've beaten the game since you already played through all the available stages and collected all of the emeralds, right? WRONG! Instead, you have to play through the entirety of the game again except with the new character Trip to get to the final boss. So her role is basically Knuckles' campaign in Sonic 3 where it's pretty much the hard mode of the game. They're all designed around Trip so you can't switch to a different character throughout the entire thing. I'll say this now, this campaign is where most of the challenge comes from in Sonic Superstars. They want you dead here. The level design is changed to the point where there are more death traps and enemies on screen at all times. Bosses not only take more damage, but they also have more aggressive attack patterns. All I can say is thank god this game doesn't have a live system, because it probably would have taken me a very long time to beat this if it did. I will say though that the levels were really fun and I enjoyed my time with them even though I perished so many times. There's one last distinction between Trip's story and the main story. She has an exclusive final boss and it was kind of a huge skill check for me, but after that you finally make it through Trip's story. Oh my god! Oh my god, I finally did it! Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> that took me like three hours, my dog. That's right, get fucked! Get fucked! Oh, give me that achievement, baby! So, pretty much, you beat the game twice. There's only one more thing you gotta do, and that's to defeat the final boss and you'll finally be done with the story. And uh, yeah, this boss sucks. Now granted, it's a classic Sonic game, so I don't really expect this game's Super Sonic boss to have the same spectacle as the 3D games. But the entire boss fight boils down to you scrounging for random rings floating around in the air like in Sonic Mania, but it's even worse here. Also, there's a huge factor of RNG in this fight. So sometimes in the fight, either Tails or Knuckles will fly into the boss arena and drop you around 10 rings, which is pretty cool. But from what I've seen, this is completely random. Meaning you can have the absolute perfect run of the boss, dodging everything and not waste any rings and still die, all because Tails and Knuckles only show up when they feel like it. Oh my god. Oh my god, thank you. What? WHAT WAS THAT?! WHAT THE F*** WAS THAT?! ARE YOU KIDDING ME?! I DIED IN THE MIDDLE OF THE F*** ANIMATION! YOU'VE GOTTA BE F***ING F*** THIS BOSS! Now all the other bosses in this game were challenging in the sense that it took a lot of skill and good reflexes to beat them. Here though, there's no skill involved other than the quick time event. 
But after you go through all of that pain, you get the final story mode achievement for Sonic Superstars. Now, unfortunately, the final part of 100%ing Sonic Superstars is very grindy. Like, you have to kill 100 enemies for each character using a special ability, like Trip's Double Jump or Sonic's Drop Dash. You get these achievements pretty easy just by grinding out this boss in Lagoon City Act 1. Then you get a couple of achievements for doing standard stuff you've seen in other Sonic games, like collecting 10,000 rings, which can be done pretty quickly by doing these newly added Fruit Acts. Speaking of, there's an achievement tied to it where you have to get 600 rings by the end of it. Don't be surprised if this takes you a couple of tries. The last thing that you really need to grind for are the medals. Medals are used to buy parts for the robots in battle mode. However, in order to get the only achievement tied to them, you have to go into a bonus stage by passing through a checkpoint with at least 50 rings. You have to collect 100 of these only through the bonus stages. Fun fact, if you get a perfect in a bonus stage, you unlock a knight's robot for battle mode. We have two more achievements I thought were worth mentioning, and they're the final two that I went for. First, I'm gonna cover Zap Scrap Star. Basically, all you gotta do is go through the entirety of Frozen Base Act 2 and not get hit at all. This one can be pretty tricky because enemies randomly spawn and can shoot randomly as well, so you gotta be on your toes. Not so much the second or third phase though, they were surprisingly more easy for me. The hardest achievement is called Gold Enemy Hunter. So in every stage, there's a gold version of an enemy, with the exception of Frozen Base Act 2 rounding up to a total of 22. See, I'm an idiot, so I only found one in my initial playthrough. So I'd like to take a moment to thank the YouTube channel Turtle PM for his guide. He's the first person I know of that's uploaded the exact location of these enemies, so uh, yeah, shout out to him. So one would think that the main issue with this achievement would just be finding the enemies, right? Nope, you have to destroy the enemy and not die for the entire stage. Age. That doesn't sound too bad, but there are many points in these stages where you can't backtrack at all. So if you pass a checkpoint and die, that's a reset on the entire stage. And yes, that also includes the final level with the Death Egg Robot. I did this first, and funny enough, the stage itself killed me more than the actual boss. But it's still painful because the level can go on for over 10 minutes, so having to reset after getting near the end of the stage makes it sing even more. It took me about 4 attempts to get this right, and since I had to fight the final boss in my initial playthrough so many times, that became the easiest part. So after Egg Fortress, I just kept going backwards through the stages and everything got easier. Overall, I'd say Sonic Superstars is a game that could stand proud among the best 2D games in the series, honestly. I had tons of fun 100%ing it because it's a game that fights back and gives me a fair challenge. And that's all I can really ask for in a Sonic game, and I was worried they were going to make it too easy. But I've been pleasantly surprised. Also, anyone that says that all the bosses in this game are bad just have a skill issue on their hands. But anyway, Sonic Superstars has been conquered.